Today we're going to give an overview of uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator because it's become a hell of a long way, uh, certainly in the last two uh, two years. First and foremost, we need to understand the difference between LinkedIn Sales Navigator and uh, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, as we can see here, there's lots of noise. You get uh, paid for promotion uh, content in here. And of course, everything you see in your newsfeed is based on the algorithm and it is serving you content. Uh, historically based on content that you have engaged uh, engaged with, which means that uh, even if you've got a thousand connections, you're only going to be seeing roughly 10% of what your uh, network is doing if you are engaging with um, uh, their content or uh, not. The beauty of Sales Navigator is it's a totally separate um, tab, if you will. And the way to think about Sales Navigator is that it is a CRM for uh, LinkedIn. So there are currently 875 million people on LinkedIn. And in theory, with Sales Navigator, you can now access uh, every single person should you uh, choose to. It's the highest level of premium that you can uh, you can get. But two things, you have to teach it because it is built on accounts, which is organizations, and leads, which are fundamentally people on um, uh, LinkedIn. So leads is a person on uh, LinkedIn. So everything you then start to see in your news feed here is based on activity that you have done or they have done to you, but you have to have saved the person or the account as a lead or a saved account in order to um, uh, see this. There's no algorithm, no marketing, no um, uh, no anything. So if I click on uh, my lead lists uh, here, so these are all the people I have saved as leads within um, uh, sales navigator and then you can filter this so i can filter by okay so out of the leads who's changed uh, roles and a great uh, thing here to see what's going on whether you're connected to people or um, not uh, you can see people who if they um if they are mentioned in the news and use that as a trigger to uh, reach out to them we can see where people have been um sharing content on linkedin and again um if they are saved as a lead, there's no algorithm, there's no anything. So from here, I can then click view. And then if appropriate to do so, you can engage directly with a like or a comment on that post and use that as a way to um, get in front of a net new uh, prospect to maintain conversation with a prospect or visibility. If you are through a going through a sales process or um, remain um, front of mind to somebody you haven't spoken to uh, in, uh, in a while. From an account perspective, you get the same uh, the same aspects, but you look at it from an account, and then we can see these different uh, filters you can work through, and so on and so forth. New decision makers is a hugely um, helpful uh, filter because it helps you understand where senior hires are happening across your um, uh, accounts, and then you can um, act upon that accordingly. Come into that uh, in more detail on another session. From here, you can star your accounts if you want to. So you've always got your main accounts that are on the um, uh, on the side. Very quickly, hit few decision makers, and then it will build out these filters for you straight away. So C-suite, so decision makers plus director, VP, CXO, and you can go straight through um, uh, through there. So fundamentally. Once you've got Sales Navigator set up for you, this is where you live. This home feed here is where you first thing in the morning drop in to see what's happening, have a quick look at who's posting something, whether someone's uh, changed roles, and if it's appropriate for you to do so, you drop a quick like or a comment, and then get back to the um, uh, the day job. But what you have to understand is everything that you're doing within Sales Navigator translates back onto um, LinkedIn. So all the likes and the comments that you uh, do will translate back onto LinkedIn and will uh, change the behavior of the algorithm uh, accordingly. So think of LinkedIn as your one to many, if you will, and Sales Navigator is your direct one to um, one to one. Taking this step further, let's look at this from an account level. So let's choose uh, Microsoft um, as an example. So you come to Microsoft as uh, as an account. If it's not saved, then what you want to be doing is saving your um, accounts. So from this perspective, you see the save button here, just click save. You can add it to a list if you want to, or can create a new one. So I'll create a new list, and this could be a Q1 target, should you uh, choose. Create and save. And your account list will appear up uh, up here. The great thing with your uh, lists, either by account lists or with um, lead lists, if you are on a um, 
uh, a corporate license from here you can then share these lists with your colleagues and you can work across them um, uh, accordingly so highly recommend doing that in terms of the collaboration then some things here i can star this so that will appear at the uh, at the top if you want to you can add notes so you can add a note in here. Again, if you've got a corporate license down here, you'll have public or private. If you make that public, that means that anybody who's on your corporate license within your organization can see that note. So again, it's a useful way to help uh, collaborate. All employers, decision makers, shared alumni. Again, from a corporate perspective, if you have team link, you'll have team link in between decision makers and shared alumni. Uh, I will come back to team link on another, uh, another session with a team link license. The team link in, sort, in, in simple terms, creates a virtual network uh, within your uh, within your organization. Your account map, you can um, save people to uh, account maps. So I can just look to add to map. Sarah's now been saved as a lead. You can move people around like this should you um, uh, choose to. Or of course, you can uh, remove people from a map if you um, uh, if you want to. I tend not to use these, but um, other organizations use the account map to uh, decision maker, uh, influencer, people you need to be um, aware of. Uh, other people use tier one as people you want to get to know, tier two as people you do know, etc. Use this how you see fit. Again, on a corporate level, you can then share these maps. You can create multiple maps and you can share these maps with your teams across here to work across. Come down a little further, you get this insight here, which is not necessarily, may or may not be useful to you in terms of growth hunt, uh, new, <coughs> new hires, job openings, and so on. People also viewed, also look at that. You then get the account alerts here um, uh, as, uh, as well. If you have a corporate license, what you will also notice is be between these two filters here, you may well have um, uh, intent data. So you'll have buyer intent, and it will be uh, three things. It'll be um, high, medium, or low in terms of engagement with your company page, uh, engagement with your employees in terms of profile views, uh, and engagement with advertising. You may well have uh, advertising beta as well below here. What that is now looking at is if anybody fills out a lead gen form, um, your marketing team is uh, pushing out, then they will appear in that box saying they filled out a um, uh, filled out a form. This filter here, new decision makers, is probably one of the most useful, especially if you're uh, uh, managing large enterprise accounts. So if I click on new decision makers, you can then see where senior hires have been uh, made. And then the idea is um, if it's appropriate or relevant to you, act upon this information and do something. So this could be a new hire coming in, uh, which might present a threat or an opportunity um, uh, to a current uh, deal uh, deal process. It could be a new hire that's come from a previous, uh, a previous organization that you've already worked with. I highly recommend um, using new decision makers at least once a month, uh, just to keep tabs on if there are any new senior hires that you haven't been um, uh, aware of. Career changes, again, also useful um, tab. This is promotions or where people have um, uh, left and gone on. You have to work a little bit harder to uh, look, uh, look, at, look at levels of seniority. So if I want to see um, what Francisco has done, I've got to click on Francisco's profile. <clears throat> and then you can scroll down and we can see he's just been um, moved into health and public finance. So again, you might want to use that information uh, if it is useful to you in terms of that side of, um, that side of things. Everything else here is pretty self-explanatory in terms of what it does, but in terms of new decision makers and career changes are the, um, the two that I find the most, um, uh, the most helpful. So from here, we then want to go uh, further into uh, Microsoft as an organization. So you click all employees, come to the bottom here, see all filters. From this point, the world is very much your, uh, your oyster. It's all around what is the question you want to ask of the data? Who are the um, ideal customer profiles that you want to um, sell to? But before we go there, you can have a quick look at your own first degree connections. It's a really simple way to uh, filter out what's happening within your first degree connections. So you can see here, I've got 97, and then I can come down to spotlights, and I can see, has anybody change roles in the last uh, 90 days. Oh yes, <clears throat> five people I'm connected to have changed roles in the last 90 days. I may have missed this in LinkedIn, but now I could use this potentially as a reason to reach out to somebody that I'm already connected to <clears throat> who have recently changed roles. Promotion, moved in different parts of the, um, uh, different parts of the, uh, 
the business. But fundamentally from here, <clears throat> it's about who are the people that I want to get to um, uh, get to know. So let's say I don't know, I, you sell to someone in the HR function. So I come to function and then I go to human resources, you click include. So now we're looking at anybody that's uh, identifies as being in the HR function. And I'm only interested in geography in the United Kingdom. So I can choose United Kingdom, drill down a little further. And we have down to, uh, I've got already, I can see in first three connections, I've got three people that I'm uh, connected to, but I want to broaden that out. I, of course, take out first three connections. Now we're looking at the, um, the broader ecosystem. We've got 305 people. I want to filter this down a little bit further, and maybe I just want to look at uh, CXO, and then I will look at <coughs> VP and see what that uh, that gives us. And that brings up 13, uh, 13 results. So from here, there are some multiple things that we can um, uh, we can do. First and foremost, I might want to save these as uh, as leads. So it's very simple. You create save. I create a lead list, <coughs> and I'd call it MSF to HR. VP UK, place and save. And now that lead list has been um, created. And then from there, I continue to add to those lists as you see fit. <clears throat> add as many as you uh, as you want. We can then within this, you can spot these things. So change roles, whether you've got shared experiences, and so on and uh, so forth, whether they posted on uh, posted on LinkedIn, etc. So the idea about creating lists is then you can you can work with those um, uh, those lists accordingly. And again, uh, your lead lists appear up here. And if you have a corporate license, you can then share here. And where I've got copy, you've got the ability to actually share those lists across your uh, your colleagues, and you can work with them um, uh, accordingly. If I take out CXO. We can look at other filters here in terms of uh, how long they may well have been in um, uh, in position. So I want to be less than a year. You can look at those that have been enrolled for less than um, uh, less than a year. Uh, I might be interested in those that are active on uh, LinkedIn. So I can come down to uh, spotlights and I can go who's posted on LinkedIn in the last um, 30 days. This is really important to start to see where people are um, uh, posting, because this is a great way to start a conversation and start engaging with people, which you could then follow up with a cold call. You could follow up with a, with a cold email or an introduction um, via your network, via team link, or they may um, even uh, want to connect with, uh, connect with you. So if you take Carl, for example, here, Global Lead um, Talent Partner, I click on post on LinkedIn. So until this moment in time, um, Carl doesn't know I exist as a human being on the uh, on the planet. And uh, so I'm going to click on uh, this post here. So now we're back into normal um, uh, normal LinkedIn. We can see what's happened here is Carl has reposted this. So this is like a retweet. So there's no point me necessarily engaging with that um, post because what I want to look for is something that Carl has actually posted his, um, uh, himself. So I click on uh, the applying talent piece. We can then see a repost, um, a repost uh, here. If Carl had posted this himself directly, I would then choose to drop a like or a comment on that uh, post, and then from that point, uh, I have then introduced myself, if you will, to um, to Carl. So let's try and find another example uh, here. So I'm with um, Helen. In terms of uh, <clears throat> what's this post here? So again, back onto um, LinkedIn. So she posted this. So until this moment, Helen doesn't know I exist as a human being on a on the planet. Uh, I can then just drop a, a quick like. As far as Helen's concerned, this has happened on normal LinkedIn. What this also then does is trigger the algorithm on LinkedIn so that Helen serves more content. I'll start to see it on LinkedIn. If I post content, and it will start to be uh, seen in um, uh, in Helen's uh, Helen's feed. I then come back to SalesNav, and then I would click Save. I would add it to a list, and I'd add it to this list, or I'd create a new list if I um, uh, if I want to. The other aspect, of course, is when people have got the uh, the gold profile here, um, they know if you've looked at the profile. But the key is from that like, if I come back to LinkedIn, if Helen looks back at my profile in the next 24, 48 hours, I know that she knows that she's that she's seen the like and she's acknowledged the like. So whenever 
you see people posting on LinkedIn. This is what Sales Navigator is encouraging you to um, uh, to do. First, it gives you insights as to maybe what they're um, uh, they're interested in, what they're doing, what they're um, uh, they're talking about. But if it's appropriate, use that as a reason to engage with a like or even better a comment and drive a uh, drive a conversation. Certainly from what we're seeing is the conversation is being rewarded um, hugely. So the posted on LinkedIn piece is really, really key. That's why once you've saved your leads, i.e. people, remember they have no idea that they've done that, then your home page becomes where it's really super easy to dip in and out of those conversations just by doing a quick view. And then if it's appropriate to um, to do so, you can drop a quick like and then come back. And you could be do this while you're sitting um doing your cold calling while you're um looking at your email while whatever it might be i always tend to have sales navigators that open all the time so i can flick in and out during the course of the day the two minute a day habit of what you're looking to um uh, what you're looking to do if you go back to um, microsoft as an account back here there are multiple ways that you can then play with these um filters so let's say uh, i'm looking really specifically for those who look at esg so I type ESG into the keyword search and the same principles. And now it's looking for anybody with ESG in their um, profile. And we can see this has given us 253 results. Same principle, you come to all filters and then you use these filters to, to figure out who is going to be the best person to um, talk to. And you want to think about um, triggers. So change jobs obviously is a trigger. If they've either been promoted on their new enroll, that might mean they've got budget. That might mean they've been brought in to um, to do some change, to do things differently. If they're posting on LinkedIn, same principles, and you absolutely want to engage in that conversation, see what they are um, uh, are talking to. Is If the content is appropriate for you to engage with in terms of what people are posting on LinkedIn, you could drop a like or a comment. You could use that in a follow-up phone call. I saw you posted this in terms of XYZ, sending an email, whatever it might be. But the key aspect of Sales Navigator is you need to save then the people as leads. So you're creating that trigger, you're creating that, that signal for Sales Navigator to um, serve you content. And then it's what do you then do with that information? What is the next best step in the uh, in the sales process that you might um, uh, that you might have. So the key in getting the best out of Sales Navigator is fundamentally getting that set up done getting your accounts saved, your leads saved. So lead is just a person, remember, and that could be uh, somebody you talk to every day, to somebody you want to get to know, to the C-suite, uh, for example. Highly recommend you create lead lists around all the, um, uh, around the, 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 C the CEOs, the CFOs, et cetera, of your organizations, even if they're people that you would never necessarily buy from, or they would necessarily give me buy from you, if they're active on LinkedIn and you can see what they're sharing and posting and talking about, that can give you a little bit more insight in terms of what's happening. And Use that as a way to um, create that conversation or bring that narrative back into play when you're um, in mid-deal or you're looking to grow your account. I saw your, the CEO talk about that or post this or whatever, uh, whatever it might, um, uh, might be. So... <clears throat> A high level overview of what Sales Navigator uh, is. I'll be doing some more deep dives into it. But fundamentally, think of it as a CRM system for LinkedIn. It is split between an account, which is an organization, a lead, which is a person. Uh, you want to feed that information so you can then live in this news feed here. This is your two minute a day where you see what's happening. And if it's appropriate for you to do so, you then just drop into a quick like or a comment on that um, on that post, and then you get on with the rest of your um, uh, you get on with the rest of your uh, your day, and then it's keeping an eye on what's happening in terms of that um, uh, that return. And let me know what you think in the comments. I will be coming back with more uh, videos, doing more deep dives into getting the best out of Sales Navigator and specific uh, searches. But that for now, hopefully, has given you a high level overview of the fundamental difference between Sales Navigator and um, LinkedIn.